commercial flight took off from Buenos Aires, Argentina to Santiago, Chile on the afternoon of August 2nd, 1947. Stardust, an Avro Lancastrian run by the British South American Airways, carried 11 people, including a British diplomat. At 5.41 p.m., the Chilean control tower received a Morse code transmission, quote, ETA Santiago, 17.45 hours, Stendek. The message was repeated twice, and minutes later, all communication was lost. The fate of the Stardust became a mystery, as the meaning behind the last message was not satisfactorily deciphered, and search rounds did not find the aircraft's wreckage. Its sudden disappearance became the stuff of legend. It wasn't until 50 years later that new evidence would be unearthed, providing some clarity about what may have happened that day in the Andes. Repurposing Aircraft The Avro 691 Lancastrian was influenced by the Avro Lancaster heavy bomber. It was a Canadian and British passenger mail transport aircraft that flew in the 1940s and 50s, and its name came from the city of Lancaster in England. The Lancastrian was essentially the same aircraft as its bomber counterpart, but stripped of armament. Its gun turrets were replaced with streamlined metal fairings and a new nose section. In fact, the first batch of Lancastrians was converted directly from Lancaster bombers. Development started in 1943 when Canadian Victory Aircraft converted the first Lancaster bomber for civil transportation in conjunction with Trans-Canada Airlines. The model was a success, and eight more were converted. They were powered by Packard-built Merlin 38 engines and featured a lengthened nose and tail. Their range was increased by fitting two 400-gallon fuel tanks in what used to be the bomb bay. The new Lancastrians mostly covered the Montreal-Prestwick route. In 1945, 30 British-built Lancastrians were delivered to the British Overseas Airways Corporation. A demonstration flight in April proved the aircraft could fly 13,500 miles from England to New Zealand in a little over three and a half days. The average speed was 220 miles per hour. Lancastrians were nimble and had a long range. They were also capable of carrying heavy loads. However, space was limited, as the original design accommodated the seven-person crew along the fuselage while most of its load fitted in its 33-foot Bombay. But the aircraft was more than qualified to carry mail in small groups of selected passengers. Starting in May of 1945, the Lancastrians served well in flights between England and Australia. The aircraft also played an important role during the Berlin airlift by transporting petrol. In total, 15 Lancastrians made 5,000 trips. In 1946, the first aircraft to make a scheduled flight from the recently renovated London Heathrow Airport was a Lancastrian operated by the British South American Airways. disappearance. On August 2nd, 1947, an Avro 691 Lancastrian III named Stardust took off from the Argentinian capital at 1.42 p.m. on its way to Santiago in Chile. The flight was uneventful until Dennis Harmer, the radio operator, sent a Morse code message at 5.41 p.m., just four minutes before it was set to arrive. Stardust was piloted by Royal Air Force pilot Captain Reginald Cook, First Officer Norman Hilton Cook, and Second Officer Donald Checklin. All the officers had actual combat experience from World War II, and even flight attendant Iris Evans had previously served in the Woman's Royal Navy Service as a chief petty officer. The aircraft had initially taken off from London under BSAA Flight CS-59, and it was transporting six passengers and a crew of five. The passengers included five men from Palestine, Switzerland, Germany, and England, one of them a diplomatic courier known as a Queen's Messenger. A woman from Germany, Marta Limpert, was the only person to have started the flight in London before switching to Stardust in Buenos Aires. But the plane never made it to Santiago, and Stardust vanished in thin air. Harmer's last radio message in Morse code spelled, quote, ETA Santiago 17.45 hours Stendek. The operator at Santiago did not understand the last word and asked for clarification. It was sent again identically. It was the last communication ever received from the aircraft or any of its passengers. Massive searches were carried out in the Andes by Argentine and Chilean rescue teams. Air Vice Marshal Don Bennett personally directed the five-day search, and other pilots from British South American Airways joined in the intensive effort. But no trace of the aircraft or the people on board was found. Theories The lack of solid evidence gave birth to many theories. Some of them included rumors of sabotage, 
further emphasized by the subsequent disappearance of two more aircraft from the same airline. And there was speculation about important diplomatic documents on board. Another theory suggested that Stardust could have been taken or destroyed by a UFO, given its cryptic last message. But the truth remained concealed in the Andes glaciers for half a century. In 1998, 51 years after the incident, two mountaineers hiking at Mount Tupangato came across vestiges of Stardust wreckage, the Rolls-Royce Merlin engine, some metal pieces, and strands of cloth. The wreckage was found in the Tupangato Glacier at an altitude of 15,000 feet. The site was 50 miles east of Santiago, adding fuel to the speculations. Two years later, the Argentine army launched an expedition to identify human remains and find clues about what could have caused the crash. It was a difficult task, as winter was approaching and there was the threat of altitude sickness. Over 100 mules ferried people and supplies to the base camp for four days. The expedition then turned to an elevated camp on the glacier. Several mules fell over the 4,500 meter pass. The expedition team finally reached the Tupungato Glacier, and the investigators only had 36 hours before they ran out of supplies. They found one of the main wheels with an intact inflated tire, indicating that the landing gear should have been retracted. This discarded the theory of an emergency landing and pointed instead to a controlled flight into terrain. An engine was also found near its propeller. The damaged propeller indicated that the engine must have been functioning well at the time of the crash while at near cruising speed. Human remains were also found. Scientists at Buenos Aires tried to identify their DNA, but not all the passengers left children. Some samples came from distant relatives, which increased the complexity of the task. There were no clues that provided definitive answers about the reasons behind the crash or why the wreckage was found 50 miles from Santiago. The most viable theory suggests that the meteorological conditions compelled the crew to fly close to its maximum altitude. Few aircraft could fly as high in 1947, and the Lancastrian Stardust could have been caught in the powerful winds known as jet stream, blowing at more than 100 miles per hour. In addition, the pilots could have deduced that they had already left the Andes behind and started the descent to Santiago, while in reality they were approaching the Tupangato Glacier head on. But experienced pilots contest this theory, claiming that Cook would not have started to descend without being sure they had crossed the mountains. One pilot even recalled that, quote, we had all been warned not to enter cloud over the mountains as the turbulence and icing posed too great a threat. It is believed that Stardust must have crashed near the top of the glacier and caused an avalanche which then buried the remains. But through glacial motion over the years, about 10% of the total wreckage has emerged, and it is widely expected that still more debris will appear in the future as the glaciers keep melting. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and let us know in the comments below if you have any theories about the meaning of that last transmission. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more content on anecdotes and mysteries from around the world.